Welcome back, fellow farmers and friends, to another episode in the Beginner's Guide series. And today we're going to be talking about installing mods for console and for PC players. So if you've been curious on how you can add some mods to your gameplay experience, whether you're on PC or on console, stay tuned. This episode is going to have all the information that you need for installing mods, no matter what platform that you are on. If you are new here to the channel, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell so you don't miss any future content. We do Let's Play series here. We have the Beginner's Guide series. And we also live stream some Farming Simulator 22 on the YouTube channel as well. We'd love to see you drop by the live stream. Make yourself known in the chat. Drop some comments on the videos. If you have any further questions about installing mods, please feel free to drop a comment. If I can't answer it, I'm sure somebody else in the community absolutely can, and I will always do my best to try to get you an answer and respond to your comment in a timely manner. And without further ado, let's get right into installing mods for council players who are playing Farming Simulator 22. All right, so once you have the game officially fired up and you are sitting here at the main menu, before we go any further... We need to go take a look at the downloadable content because this is where we are going to access our mods for console players as well as PC players. PC players can also still download mods right from within the game, but they also have another option to download mods from the Farming Simulator Mod Hub website, which I leave the link to in the description of every video that I publish. So it'll also be down there in the description of this episode. Even council players, you guys can go to the Farming Simulator Mod Hub website and you can search for a mod. Maybe you're curious if a mod that you've seen in, in a YouTube video, you want to see if it's available on council. You can go to the Mod Hub website and it will let you know what platforms it is available on, whether it's just a PC mod or if it's available on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. So once we click on downloadable content, it's going to take us into our next menu system. And we do have some options here on the left. I am just going to go through some of these very briefly. Currently right now, we are at the option that allows us to go into whatever category it is that we are searching for regarding a mod. Maybe there is a specific type of truck that we want to see if it's available on the mod hub or in the downloadable content section. We can open up this section here and everything that is a truck vehicle, you can see even a four wheeler, some side by side, stuff like that, motorcycles, it's all gonna be in here. These are what will be available for you to download. Moving down the list, we have all of the mods that you may currently have installed. If you've never installed any mods before whatsoever, this page is probably gonna be blank for you. As you install mods, this is where you would come back to see what you already have installed. Uh, whether it's on console or on PC. Just as equally important is looking at the update section. Your mods will require updates from time to time. Please make sure that when you are loading into the game, that you're coming into downloadable content and you're taking a look at this update icon here to see if you have anything that requires an update. If you're having any sort of like issue or bug with a piece of equipment or a map or whatever the mod is that you've downloaded, it may just need an update, and as soon as the publisher of that mod releases that update, it'll become available. These do not, to my knowledge, these do not automatically download. So again, it is important that you come in here and you check this. I would recommend checking it every time you fire Farming Simulator up, especially if you're someone who's only playing like maybe once or twice every couple weeks. Definitely come in here, take a look at the downloadable section or the update section and make sure that you're uh, downloading all of the required updates to ensure that all of your equipment continues to work that you have in your gameplays. Moving here, we have all of your DLC. So you can see here, if you are a premium or platinum expansion owner, uh, a lot of the items that come with those expansions are going to also be installed here. However, you're going to see some other equipment packages that are not installed. These are ones that you actually have to pay for. So pumps and hoses, the Porsche Diesel Junior 108, the Volvo T425, the AGI pack, the Class Xerian saddle, track pack. None of these are currently installed. And then if I go to the detail section or... I select it and I open it up. I see now that I get the option to buy it. And they do give you some screenshots down here at the bottom that you can view. And they give you some in-game uh, in glimpses as to what the items look like. So pretty cool there that they give you some snapshots. We'll show you some other snapshots that are very useful uh, when trying to determine 
what it is that you would like to download. Extra content as well if you are, again, a Platinum Premium Expansion owner. Uh, a lot of this is going to be unlocked. You can see here that we basically have an expanded wardrobe and then a couple pieces of equipment and then a farming hero suit. You can run around your farm looking uh, somewhat like Iron Man. But now let's talk about how we can actually find our mods. Now it might seem pretty self-explanatory. I just find the specific piece of equipment or whatever it is that I'm looking for. If I'm looking for a forklift, I'm gonna go in here and view all the different forklifts. Let's say for an example, I'm looking for a different style trailer. I can come in here and look for that specific trailer. But what I'll say too is they sometimes tuck a few things into areas that you wouldn't necessarily think that they would be in. So for an example, if we take a look at harvesters, combine harvesters also need a header that actually does the harvesting. And we can see here that we really don't have any section for combine harvester headers. That is because if we click on harvesters and we go inside here, we are going to see that this is where they also have the harvester headers. Now, some of the headers in here may just be some replications of maybe some real world type equipment. Some of these are also going to be a little bit more on the fantasized side of things where their working width may be absolutely huge to allow you to get fields done in a very quick manner. Some mods also may have an unrealistic capacity for holding grain, such as the Colossus Harvester Pack. You can see here it holds upwards of 1 million liters, which basically means we're probably not going to have to unload that combine harvester for the entire time that we're harvesting a field. But this actually does bring me to the next point. Let's say that we are interested in installing this set of harvesters here. It's going to give us a description of the mod. And then also what is very nice to pay attention to is capacity is definitely one thing for stuff like grain trailers, um, any sort of harvester, stuff like that. Definitely want to be paying attention to the capacity, forage wagons, anything that has a fill limit. And depending on the size of the fields that you're managing, sometimes having these unrealistic capacities is pretty nice because it means you can get some more work done. But so we're, we want to look at the capacity and make sure that what we're getting is actually something that is functional and is going to serve us a good purpose on the farm. We can take a look at the base price. We know now that this harvester is going to cost $300,000, might as well say $301,000. Uh, the Titan headers, so this is what I really like, is they get into the different working widths of all of the different harvester headers that are going to come with this equipment pack. So 45 feet, 29 and a half feet. And then we get into the root harvester. So this is doing stuff like sugar beet, potatoes. Uh, 2.5 million liters is the max capacity. They have the sugar beet header, the potato header. They still give us the work width. So we can look at all this information here and determine, is this something that we want to download or maybe, maybe not so much? And then to draw some comparisons to other harvesters that you're going to see on here, let's, uh, let's pick on the Rostelmash Acros 595. We can see here that for a base price of $214,000, we can get a combine harvester with a capacity of 9,000 liters. We also know that the header is going to cost, well, I don't even know if that's actually the header. It might be, I'm thinking, but our working width is seven meters. So this combine harvester here is only going to hold 9,000 liters of crop and we only have a working width of seven meters. So if you're someone that's working with some larger fields, that's gonna present a little bit of a, of a problem, I guess I could say, because now we know that it's gonna take us a little bit more time to harvest that field. But if you're someone that's going for some realistic gameplay, then something like this would be right up your alley because there's nothing that is far stretched on this piece of equipment as far as the capacity is concerned or that the working width is concerned. So as we have scrolled throughout, I have found a Case IH Axial Flow 240 Series Combine Harvester that I feel like I would like to use. I, I love the look of it. I'm looking at the screenshots. Looks like we have a pretty modest working width here with this Case Harvester. So this is the one that I would like to install. Basically from here, all I'm going to do is hit the install button down here at the bottom. I am going to get a notification that says it has been added to my download list. I'm just going to say OK. And then what I could actually do is go to, well, it looks like it's already, it's already installed. And then I can see here, there is my Case IH Axial Flow 240 Series mod. 
Now, once I load the game up and I go to the store page and I look at harvesters, I should see this one here available for me to purchase on the store page. That is the process that you are going to utilize to find a lot of your different mods. Now, if you're looking for a specific map, we're going to come in here to the map section and we're going to scroll through here until we find the name of the map that maybe we've seen again in a YouTube video or we um, read about on online or somebody told us about, whether it's Goldcrest Valley, it's Court Farm Country Park. Some maps, again, make sure that you are checking your update page. Like right now, this Combine Harvester, which actually I need to uninstall this Combine Harvester, um, is telling me that it needs an update. With maps, the big thing to keep in mind with maps is when they post the patch notes for any updates that they have ran. And when you look at maps, it's going to give you maybe a little backstory. It's going to tell you about the fields, about the animal points, about production points, different maybe different types of crop that are specific to that map that you don't find on any other maps but we get down here to the change log and there is a reason why lancy boy is apologizing for this change log because a new save is needed if you're unfamiliar with what a new game save is referring to map updates i can explain that really quick it does work the same way within reason for both council players and for PC players. So let's just say that you have American Falls already previously downloaded and Lancy Boy drops his new map update and says, sorry, requires a new game save. Basically what we need to do is exactly that. We need to start a whole new game mode, select the way that we are going to play, and then come in here to the map and we need to hit continue and actually start a new game save on that map for all of those updates to take effect. It is not to say that you cannot continue playing on the previous save. However, you're just not going to have any of those updates applied to a previous save. So when you're looking at different mods, again, just kind of have an idea of what category of mods you're looking for. Or maybe you're brand new to downloading mods and you are about to just go crazy like it's Christmas morning. They have everything from farmhouses to factories to selling points to all of your farm equipment, to stuff that is specific to animals, specific to grass, weeders, slurry tank, manure spreaders, subsoiler spaders, you name it, it's here on the Mod Hub. Just take your time, kind of cruise throughout, see what all is available for you on council, as well as PC players, especially if PC players are downloading mods right from within the game, which is fairly simplistic, doesn't really take much um, to do or to get those installed. So now we'll shift gears into the alternative way that PC players can install mods. Council players, there is still some information that I can give you uh, regarding PC players installing mods, such as going to the Farming Simulator Mod Hub website. So council players, feel free to stick around for the next portion because I can also show you where on the go, if you're not sitting at your council on Farming Simulator, you can also pull this web page up. You can look at all these different mods. You can determine whether or not they're available on council. You can read the update log. You can look at the pictures of each piece of equipment. And you can kind of start to put together your uh, farming equipment wish list for when you get home and you do jump on farming simulator and you head to the downloadable content section you'll know exactly what mods you're looking for all right to download mods from the actual farming simulator mod hub website again i will leave the link to this down in the description of this episode below where you can just have ease of access and it'll take you right to the mod hub portion of the farming simulator website so starting kind of from the top here, we have some of the same options that we had available to us within the council version. So we have the top downloaded mods, and then we also have all of the different categories available to us. Or what you can do is once the mod hub loads up and you're at the latest and greatest mods, you can just start to scroll through here and get down to the bottom of the page. And you can see there's 222 pages of mods that we can scroll through. Now, we don't necessarily have time to scroll through 222 pages of mods because I've got some additional farming simulator content that needs to be uh, recorded, edited, and uploaded for you guys to continue to enjoy. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this mower right here, the G760, and say, this is it. This is a piece of equipment that I would like to see or maybe just learn more about and possibly end up downloading. 
I'm simply just going to click on the more info. I'm going to look over here and I'm going to say, okay, price wise is $48,000. Requires 160 horsepower to operate this piece of equipment and it has a working width of 7.6 meters. That's not too bad for a mower. And it also looks like it does some mulching as well, which is not bad. Not bad at all. So we can mow a grass field. We can mulch down our field. So we actually have a bit of a dual purpose piece of equipment right here. I can look through here and see that, yep, it's for Farming Simulator 22, the manufacturer, what category they currently have it in. Now, this is a very cool option right here. If you're browsing mods on the Mod Hub website, I want to see what other pieces of equipment or what other mods that this individual here does, Agri-Design Modding. I can simply just click on their name and it is going to take me to a page that's dedicated to all the pieces of mod equipment or mods that this individual has done. And I can go through here and I can browse all of this stuff and they have one full page of mods. So if there's stuff that I really like by someone that I want to see what else they have, that is an option for us to quickly just see everything that they have done. It's version 1.0. It was recently just released on October 27th, and it is for PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and the Xbox, I'm assuming, Series X or Series S as well. So console players can also download this mod right from within the game. PC players, this is where our process kind of differs a little bit. So we have the option here to download. It's going to download into a zip file. We're going to see up here across the top, we're going to get this download dialog box that opens up. Now, once that is completed, the next thing that we have to do is locate our downloads folder via our file explorer. Now, once we have located our downloads folder, we are going to see that the GRAX G760 item that we just downloaded from the Mod Hub does appear here. We don't want to do anything else with it. We don't necessarily, we don't need to unzip the file. We don't need to open anything up. So all I'm going to do is click on the mod that we just download and you can either right click and hit copy or you can just do your keyboard shortcut of control C and now we have copied this file. Now in order to get to your mods for Farming Simulator 22, it is a bit of a process so I will step you through how to get to your Farming Simulator mods folder. Over here on the left side of the screen, you're going to see an option titled Documents. You are going to want to click on that. Once you are inside the Documents screen, you are going to want to scroll down until you find a folder that is titled My Games. Click on that. Select Farming Simulator 22. And this brings us right back into the menu that we were just staring at. Once you're here, you're going to want to locate a folder titled Mods. And you can double click on that as well. And you're going to see all of the mods that we currently have installed for the game. Now, all we need to do once we are here, I like to kind of click over into this blank open space, and then we just need to hit Control V or paste, or we can right click and hit paste. And you can see now our newest mod that we just downloaded from the Mod Hub website is now available in our mod folder. So from here, what we can do is we can exit out of all of these folders and then we need to get back into the game. Now, if your game is currently up and running while you're downloading mods from the Mod Hub website and you're placing them in your Farming Simulator 22 mod folder, you will have to restart the game in order for that mod to appear in your installed mods section. And just like that, after a quick restart of the game, you can now see that the Gyrix G760 is showing up on our installed mod page. And again, once we double click on it, it contains all of the same information, all of the same screenshots that we've seen from the Mod Hub website. Now, once we go into an actual gameplay, we go to the farm store, we go to mowers, we will see that the Gyrix G760 will be available for us to purchase or to lease. Modded items such as equipment will also show up on the sales page as well throughout your gameplay. So always be keeping an eye out on your sales page, especially if you have an expensive piece of equipment that you have installed as a mod that you can't currently afford. Maybe it'll show up on the sales page and you'll be able to get a pretty nice discount for that piece of equipment. But ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for installing mods on both console and on PC. I hope if you are a new player out there and you've been curious about how to install mods, I hope this video has helped you out in some way and getting you started into the right direction with installing mods. I will caution you though, be careful. 
Mods are very addicting, and sometimes it is very difficult to go back to playing the base game without any mods. With that, we'll catch you in the next one.